Welcome to the Grim Leftovers Show with Grimnir every Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern on RealLibertyMedia.com and RLMRadio.xyz. Hey, you know what? It's Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern right now, and this is the Grim Leftovers Show. I'm your host, Grimnir, and we got some stories lined up for you. Oh, yes, the leftovers, that's what they call it, that's what I call it, they, me, you, I, uh, and probably a lot of you by now are a little bit tired of leftovers, because Thanksgiving was last Thursday, and you've probably been eating leftovers for a while, And but that's okay, you get an hour's worth of leftovers here right now, but this is not stuff that will necessarily fill your belly but fill your brain instead. And it's leftovers. So you may have heard some of these stories or read some of these stories over the past couple weeks, a month, whatever. Uh, but uh, I'm going to share them with you once again, because that's what I do here. Anyway, let me say hi and howdy to all the folks out there in all the various places. They may be listening in from uh, primarily, of course, reallibertymedia.com uh, on the sidebar player there or or uh, on the on the Grim Leftover Show page, you could be listening in from rlmradio.xyz or freedomsnetwork.com, realliberty.org, or a host of other places that we go out to. But we got a chat room here that which you may have seen a link to the chat room there in the top right corner there of reallibertymedia.com, and you can jump on in there and chat with all the fine folks that we got here. Chatting it up tonight. Let me just say hi to those that I see chatting here. We got the sock puppet, the frumpy. We got Vanna White, Miss Miss Moose Girl. She says she's tired of leftovers. Aw. <laughs> we got Vinny and Kate Hansel, a.k.a. Judge Dredd. Uh, we got Beetle, and, and, and I saw other people talking, too. I don't know who all. Is. Oh, Miss Kate. Miss Kate's here. Meister Brow. Uh, I, I don't know who all tuned in, but uh, howdy and welcome to y'all. Uh, thanks for jumping on in here. Vinny's not tired of leftovers. He loves them leftovers. And Sock Puppet says he's hungry. Hungry! <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> oh yeah, I do have a bunch of, I do have a bunch of, a bunch of, uh, stories lined up here for you. So I might, might as well just get on to them. Cause, uh, what else have I got to tell you about? Not too much. Uh, oh, yeah, today was uh, Cyber Monday following uh, Black Friday last Friday and Black Friday throughout the weekend and Cyber Monday today, which will probably be Cyber Tuesday tomorrow because, you know, these retailers, they just can't get enough and they keep on extending. Oh, we've extended the sale. Come on by. We got the greatest deals in the world. And you go there and look at it. I don't, I don't see anything special. Is that really a special price? Looks like the same price it would normally be. <laughs> but I think that some of them actually do use the Black Fridays and Cyber Mondays to ratchet up the prices for the next time around because they they tell you, all right, Black Friday or Cyber Monday's over. Here's the, we're back to the regular price, which is the price they inflated it to before dropping it to its, re, its normal regular price to sell it to you at a quote discount unquote over over these holiday sales. Of course, there will be end of the year sales. You could count on that, and uh, President's Day sales, and Valentine's Day sales, and oh. Well, whatever day they can make up in their own mind and convince you of, that's 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 the sales uh, that they're gonna have there for you to share with you. All right, let's get to it. <laughs> the free thought project dot com posted November eighteen here just a couple of weeks ago. Now this was supposed to happen that week. But I've looked, and I can't find anything to show that it did actually happen. But here's the story. In his historic move, vote to federally legalize marijuana to take place in Congress this week. As I said, I've looked high and low, trying to find whether or not that vote ever took uh, place there or not. And I, I, I didn't see it. 
I don't see where they actually did that vote. So maybe they didn't. And as far as I could tell, none of these sites that reported on it, and it was reported on a lot of sites, that this vote was going to happen. But I, I can't find any follow-up to this at all that this vote actually took place. Washington, D.C., as countless individuals across the land of the free are rotting in cages for possessing a plant deemed illegal by the government. A historical bill is making its way through Congress that could change everything. A congressional committee reportedly plans to vote on a bill this week that would end the federal prohibition of marijuana. The Marijuana Opportunity Reinvestment and Expungement More Act, sponsored by the House Judiciary Committee Chairman Gerald Nadler, would remove cannabis from the federally con from the Controlled Substances Act. But that is not all. It would go one step further and seek to undo the horrific damage caused by the state's war on this plant. According to the legislation, the act would provide for expungement and resentencing of prior convictions and prevent federal agencies from using cannabis as a reason to deny access to benefits or citizenship status for immigrants. Immigrants. It would also impose a 5% federal tax, hey, what's that all about, on the sales of marijuana products. Some of that revenue would be directed towards a new Opportunity Trust Fund, really, Opportunity Trust Fund, aimed at supporting grant programs to provide job training and legal aid for people impacted, impacted, by prohibition enforcement, loans for small marijuana businesses owned and controlled by socially and economically disadvantaged individuals, and effort to minimize bar barriers to licensing and employment in the legal industry. Some of these efforts would be run through a new Cannabis Justice Office in the Department of Justice. You said what now? You're gonna do what? You're gonna you're gonna have the Department of Justice run these things? How well has that worked out for you so far? <laughs> yeah, it was a, it was a, it was a golf clap, Vinny. Little golf clap there for the removing it from the Controlled Substances Act. Of course, I, as I said, I, I've looked high and low for uh, uh, anything that says that this was actually done. I don't know that they can actually do it. I don't think that they can actually do this at a federal level as long as it's in the United Nations Charter uh, 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 about um, uh, drug drug control policies in the United Nations. So I, I'm not positive on that, but uh, I'm thinking it may be a pipe dream. So anyway, the bill currently has 55 co-sponsors, showing the partisan divide when it comes to legalizing the plant. All but one of the co-sponsors are demon craps, uh, Democrats. Sadly, most of the small government Republicans, small government, hmm, still think massive militarized police kicking in the doors of in the middle of the night to arrest people for a plant is conservative. <sighs> According to Forbes, Wednesday's planned Judiciary Committee vote on the far-reaching cannabis reform legislation is expected to be announced Monday, which was today. Um, so, I, I, again, nothing. Nothing. Not a word yet that I've been able to find. The monumental nature of this bill cannot be understated. The good that it could do not simply by legalizing weed, but by reversing the damage caused by the war on marijuana is immeasurable. I agree. I doubt that you could ever give these people's their lives back, the lives that were stolen from them 
over this crappy ass prohibition stuff. But uh, at least if you can let them out and and uh, kind of a little bit reverse some of that stuff, that that that, that would be good. Uh, starting with the Colorado in Washington in 2012, the government's immoral, violent, and destructive war on marijuana began to come to a grinding halt. Although, measures for medical marijuana were enacted long before this. Complete legalization paved the way for a revolution. Sadly, however, despite the revolution... Millions of people whose lives were ruined from weed arrests, not from weed, from weed arrests, are still carrying around these convictions on their permanent records, drastically stifling their career in home buying opportunities. Once those within the system began to realize this, measures were taken to help these folks clean up their records. States across the country have been setting out to undo this damage, but it has not been fast enough. This bill could, emphasize could, change that. But that's not all it would do. Legalizing marijuana would also have a massive potential to curb the opioid crisis currently gripping the nation. As the Free Thought Project previously reported, in a study published in a peer-reviewed journal, Melvin D. Livingston, uh, Tracy E. Barnett, Charles Delcher, and Alexander C. Wegenar set out to see if any association existed between Colorado's legalization of marijuana and the opioid-related deaths in the state. The researchers looked at all of the available data from the year 2000 to the year 2015, what they discovered may come as a shock to many. While the rest of the nation struggles with a burgeoning fatal opioid and heroin overdose crisis, the state of Colorado saw opioid deaths reduced while its population exploded. It has been long, long been stated that cannabis is a gateway drug, which leads users to experiment with other drugs leading up to the most deadly, such as heroin. But researchers in the study, published in the American Journal of Public Health, found that the availability of safe and legal cannabis actually reduced opiate deaths. Hey, Dan, how you doing? Uh, Colorado legalization of rec recreational marijuana sales and use resulted in a 0 0.7 deaths per month reduction in opioid-related deaths. This reduction represents a reversal of the upward trend in opioid-related deaths in Colorado. The researchers concluded legalization of cannabis in Colorado was associated with short-term reductions in opioid-related deaths. It's not, uh, it's not just that study either. There were other studies showing deaths from opioids plummet in states with legal cannabis and that 80% of cannabis users give up prescription pills entirely. A February 2017 study confirmed that opioid dependence and overdoses dropped significantly in medical cannabis states. The article goes on, referencing more studies and other such things, but uh, just, just, just leave it to say, if this does actually get through, and I can't imagine how it's going to actually get through, but if it does actually get through, not only the the House but the Senate, and then and then pass Trump, um, and they put put through all these various uh, parts of this act, and they, they remove pot, cannabis, weed from the Controlled Substances Act, that would be just awesome. I mean, it would be terrific. Uh, so it, it's something to look forward to, uh, or to hope for, I guess. Uh, not that it's going to happen, and I don't really expect it to happen, but um, it's something that would be very good for everybody, even those people that are against marijuana. All right. <laughs> All right, 
Moving on to a clap site here. Yes, the corporate labor has propaganda. CNBC. Not that this is the only place this article was posted either, but it was the first one it came across, and it seemed, it seemed adequate to my needs here. <laughs> okay. Lawsuits claim Burger King's impossible Whoppers are contaminated by meat. I was thinking I might, you know, if, if I ever actually went to Burger King, but I don't know that that matters. But, but you can, I could probably go ahead and say I went to Burger King. Who are they to prove me right or wrong? Uh, and, and file an opposing lawsuit saying that my meat burgers were were contaminated by their those impossible burgers. <laughs> because to me, the impossible burgers, the vegetable based meat, as they like to call it, is in itself a contamination. To have that that stuff in the same building with actual meat seems like a bad idea. Okay, anyway, the, the lawsuit was filed in, a, uh, in Miami Federal Court, seeks damages for all U.S. purchasers of the Impossible Burger. A pro in a proposed class action, Philip Williams said he bought an impossible whopper and what what <laughs> and would not have paid a premium price had he known the cooking would leave it coated in meat by products. Burger King, a, a, a unit of a Toronto based restaurant uh, Brands International Incorporated declined to comment, saying it does not discuss pending litigation. So Burger King was sued on Monday of that week. What, 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 day, what day was this posted? Uh, November 18th. So uh, Monday of that week by a vegan customer who accused the fast food chain of contaminating its meatless Impossible Whoppers by cooking them on the same grill as traditional meat burgers. In a proposed class action, Philip Williams said he bought an Impossible Whopper, the plant-based alternative to the Burger King's regular Whopper, at an Atlanta drive through and would not have paid the premium price had he known the cooking would leave it coated, coated by those nasty animal juices. Ooh. The lawsuit filed in Miami Federal Court seeks damages for all U.S. purchases of the Impossible Whopper and an injunction requiring Burger King to plainly disclose that Impossible Whoppers and regular burgers are cooked on the same grills. Uh, in its website, uh, describes the Impossible Burgers as 100% Whopper, 0% beef. Now, if you look up in a thesaurus, Whopper. You're going to find one of the uh, alternate wor use, use words that you could use for Whopper is lie. <laughs> anyway, so, so for guests looking for a meat-free option, a non-broiler method of preparation is available upon request. I, I don't even want to know what that is. Non-broiler option. Uh, all right. So I, I, I don't need to go any further on that. I, I just wanted to tell you, vegans are nuts. I think I've mentioned that before. Vegans are nuts. Um, <laughs> fruits and nuts. <laughs> whatever. Whatever else grows grows out of the ground. But uh, the fact that 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 Burger King is 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 infecting perfectly good meat. Not that Burger King's got perfectly good meat. Just saying, uh, supposedly perfectly good meat well, with with this vegan crap. That that is offensive to me. I think I think Burger King needs to be sued from both directions. I didn't even know that Burger King was a Canadian uh, uh, operation, but apparently it is. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, God. How many of you out there are fans of Carlos Santana? Do you like Carlos Santana? 
pretty awesome dude, eh? Well, he has a song, one of, one of Carlos's songs. One of my favorite songs by Carlos Santana. It's called Europa. That's only part of the title, but you get the idea. It's it's a great song. Anyway, not that that, that has anything to do with this. Just thought I'd bring it up prior to getting here. <laughs> From Sputniknews.com, posted November 19. <laughs> NASA study confirms water vapor above Jupiter's moon Europa, fueling hopes of possible life. Now, I've, I've long thought that there's a great probability, a great probability that not only is there a life on Europa, but it is teeming with life underneath the, the great ice sheets that are on it. And if you look at photos, or images, I don't know if we necessarily call them photos, of Europa, you'll see like these big like road, it looks like roads running all across the surface of Europa. That could be natural from, who knows, I mean it's all ice on the, on the surface, but it's, it's water underneath. It's water. So uh, it, it, there could be a whole, you know, sub- not subterranean, because terrain would mean, like, dirt, right? Um, but uh, under the ice, a whole a whole society going on down there. Anyway, 40 years ago, the Voyager s spacecraft snapped the first close-up images of Europa, one of Jupiter's moons, with subsequent missions to the outer solar system amassing enough fascinating information to make it a high-priority target in NASA's search for life. A team led by researchers at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, uh, Maryland, has confirmed traces of water vapor above the surface of Jupiter's icy moon Europa. While scientists have not yet detected liquid water directly, anyhow, uh, we've found the next best thing, water in vapor form. Lead researcher and NASA's planetary scientist, Lucas Panganini, said in a statement, According to the research paper published in the journal Nature Astronomy on the 18th of November, the team discovered enough water vapor being released from Europa to fill an Olympic-sized swimming pool within minutes. Observations were carried out by the WM Keck Observatory in Hawaii in the course of 17 nights between 2016 and 2017, using a spectrograph to detect the chemical composition of other planets, uh, the atmospheres of other planets, by scanning infrared light they release or absorb. Panganini's team detected the faint, yet distinct, signal of water vapor just once during the period. Well, we suggest that the outgassing of water vapor on Europa occurs at lower levels than previously estimated with only rare localized events of stronger activity. The groundbreaking discovery is all the more remarkable as this moon is one of the highest priority targets in NASA's search for extraterrestrial life. E.T. Phone Earth! Uh, for many years... Scientists have suspected that the water, that there is water on Europa's surface, with several tantalizing findings appearing to back up those claims. The first came from NASA's Galileo spacecraft, which found evidence of an electrically conductive fluid on the moon's surface as it measured perturbations, pertur per perturbations, of Jupiter's magnetic field near Europa while orbiting the gas giant uh, between 95 and 2003. In 2013, scientists announced that they had used NASA's Hubble Space Telescope to detect the chemical elements of hydrogen and oxygen, the components of water, H2O, uh, in plume-like configurations on Europa's atmosphere, in Europa's atmosphere. Subsequent more detailed analysis of the earlier Galileo data in 2018 found evidence of possible plumes of liquid. The current research, along with other previous Europa findings, has only measured components of water above the surface. 
an existing spacecraft as existing spacecraft have limited capabilities to detect it. Studies using ground-based telescopes to look for water in deep space have to take into account the distorting effects of water in the Earth's atmosphere. To minimize the issue, Paganini's team used complex mathematical and computer modeling to simulate the conditions of Earth's atmosphere. Goddard planetary scientist Avi Mandel was quoted as saying, We performed diligent safety checks to remove possible contaminants in ground-based observations, but eventually we have to get closer to Europa to see what's really going on. I'll go. <laughs> I want to go to Europa. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> Now this is something that NASA's upcoming Europa Clipper mission will be able to offer in 2023. The Clipper orbiter will conduct a detailed sur survey of Europa's surface, deep interior, thin atmosphere, and subsurface ocean, and potentially even smaller active vents. It will try to take images of any plumes and sample the molecules it finds in the atmosphere with mass spectrometers. Hopefully, these efforts will further unlock the secrets of Europa and answer the intriguing questions of whether it carries the potential for life. I'm going to say it carries more than the potential. I believe it actually has lots of life there. And they're probably trying to hide from people like NASA because they know NASA's from Earth and Earth people are violent and and terrible, and and so, yeah. <laughs> ah. All right. KOAT.com posted November 20th. What do I have to say? What, what, what can I say about this? The American Medical Association calls for immediate ban on electronic cigarettes and vaping devices. Let me just give you a little bit before I get into it at all. The American Medical Association on Tuesday of that week called for an immediate ban on all electronic cigarettes and vaping devices. The group adopted the sweeping stance at a policy meeting making meeting in San Diego. It aims to lobby for state and federal laws, regulations, or legal action to achieve a ban. But the industry is sure to fight back. The AMA cited a surge in underage teen use of e-cigarettes, which typically heat a solution that contains nicotine. It's simple. We must keep nicotine products out of the hands of young people, Dr. Patrice Harris, the AMA's president, said in a statement. The doctor's group said a separate issue also prompted its action. The US, recent U.S. outbreak of lung illnesses linked to vaping. Most of those sickened said they vaped THC, the high-inducing ingredient from marijuana not nicotine. Officials believe a sickening agent used in black market THC vaping products may be a culprit. I'll just stop here with that and say this. Get the hell off of do, trying to control what I do, what other people do, and if you think that kids are somehow getting hooked on nicotine instead of your Instead of your, your, your medical and industry drugs, good for them. Good for them. Uh, and they're not necessarily even smoking nicotine-based products with their e-cigarettes or vape things, vape pens, vape whatever. Um, and if they are, it's none of your business. If they want to, they will. Whether you say they can or not. All you're doing is trying to make things that should never have in, been under your purview whatsoever under your purview. 
You want more control. You want more power. This is ridiculous. And as far as the people that have been affected by smoking black market THC vaping pods or whatever the hell they are, I, I'm, not, I'm really not familiar with them, uh, other than talking to people here in the chat, reading articles on the web. I, I haven't partaken in any THC vaping whatsoever. So I, I am totally unfamiliar with the whole uh, vaping end of this. I just want to say that the last thing anybody needs is to have more government controls over more things that people want to use in their personal lives. It's ridiculous. Nonsensical. <sighs> okay, that's all I got to say about that. There's plenty more to the article. I, I just, I, to, to me, just keep your god dang fingers out of my business. Keep your face out of my face. I want nothing to do with y'all. Nothing. And you should not be trying to have anything to do with me. Okay. This, this next article, I have two different versions of it, and, and, I, and I just wanted to show you the difference that comes from different perspectives of who is running the website. Not that there's really any content difference in the, in the two places, but let me just give it to you. The first one is from the American Bar Association website, which, okay. And the American Bar Association says, child porn suspect can't be forced to disclose computer password, state Supreme Court rules. The next article, version of the article, is from Ars Technica. Dot com, which was posted a couple days later. And it says, Suspect can't be compelled to reveal 64-character password court rules. <laughs> okay. So one of them specifically points out he's a child porn suspect. The other one points out that the guy's got a 64-character password. <laughs> meaning probably next to impossible for anyone to crack, and especially not any government douche, douche canoes. <laughs> Meet of the article here. The Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination protects a child pornography suspect from being forced to reveal his computer password. The Pennsylvania Supreme Court has ruled. And a, the court ruled four to three, meaning that three out of the seven were saying, yeah, you can say just screw it to the Fifth Amendment and force this guy to incriminate himself. <laughs> so the court ruled four to three for Joseph Davis, who has been told in the Luzerne County uh, Jail, uh, held in the Luzerne County Jail on charges, of child pornography and illegal use of a communications device, uh, that being his computer, your computer is a communications device, if you were unaware, during the password litigation. The Associated Press reports uh, and the Electronic Frontier Foundation, EFF, which filed an amicus brief supporting the Fifth Amendment argument, applauded the decision in a press release. I think I already covered the EFF version of, of this story previously, either on this show or on Freakers Ball. I'm not positive, but I think I did. I've read so many versions of it that it all gets a little mixed up in the brain, you know. Anyway, state investigators had used a peer-to-peer -peer file sharing network to down uh, had to download two files cont containing child pornography from the computer's. Uh, from the computers using Davis IP address, according to the majority uh, opinion by Justice Deborah Todd. 
Armed with a search warrant, the investigators seized the computer in September 2014 and found it had been wiped clean. When agents executed another search warrant in October 2015, Davis said he was the only one who knew his computer password. When asked to provide it, Davis Lee allegedly responded, it's 64 characters, and why in the hell would I ever give that to you, Fox? We, we both know what's on there. It's only going to hurt me. No fucking way I'm going to give it to you. <laughs> Later, David Davis said, Password? What password? <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, whether or not the guy is a, a disgusting child porn type guy, or whether he's in it to protect just to support his right to not self-incriminate doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is the fact that this government of yours, and in this case, specifically Pennsylvania, but I, I'm sure the Supreme Court would probably agree. I, I don't know if it's gone go, going that way or has gone that way or not, um, but, but they'll probably go ahead and buy in too, uh, especially since um, there's... I, I do believe uh, a more conservative, is that what they call them? Republican uh, types on, on the Supreme Court now than there are the liberal or Democrat types on, on the Supreme Court. And the conservatives want to arrest everybody for doing anything. Nothing. For doing nothing. Uh, and, and they want to force you to obey them regardless of what they have to say. <laughs> so, you see, uh, these, uh, these, as was pointed out earlier in that legalized marijuana thing, the, the small government Republican types are really huge government, massive control types. I hope that, they, that at no point is this guy ever forced, not that they could actually force him anyway, if he says he doesn't remember, well, prove him wrong, really. Um, and you, if you really want to get into his computer and you can hack a 64-character password, more power to you, but I don't think you can. I'm pretty sure you can't. And I'm sure you're trying every freaking law you can think of in order to get him to give up that password, but he's not going to do it. <laughs> So, um, and, and if they could get away with forcing somebody to give up a password because of the, oh, it's child porn, oh, it's the worst thing in the world, uh, then they could get you, get people uh, to give up passwords for any minor little issue. It doesn't matter what that issue might be. Uh, they can force you, compel you uh, to, to give up your password for whatever. They should never be able to do that. You should, they should, it should just not be a thing. And um, whether or not this guy's actually even got a 64 character password on his computer, um, <laughs> I mean, he, he can have a one character password for all we know. And he's just saying, yeah, it's 64 characters. Keep trying. Keep on trying. <laughs> and they keep putting in 64 characters and they're never going to get it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> mm, thirsty today. All right. Okay. Is this would this be more privacy towards your end? Is it safe? Do you trust it? I don't know. From uh, the Daily Mail .co .uk, posted on the 21st of November. Getting pretty close to, to real time here. Uh, <laughs> Twitter will allow users to hide replies they don't like under changes being rolled out on that day to prevent online bullying. So let's say you post up on your Twitter somewhere that 
climate change is garbage. It's nonsense. And then you get a lot of the, the climate change loonies up there saying, Oh, what's wrong with you saying climate change is fake nonsense? So you go up there and say, I, I don't I don't like what you got to say about my post, so I'm going to hide your replies to my post. I'm going to basically put you on global ignore so that nobody else can see your bullshit being said to me. And only the ones that I like, the, the, the replies that I like saying, Yeah, you're right, climate change... Uh, man-made climate change is nonsense. So that that would be great. Uh, Vinny says his password is 15. Okay. Well, I don't. Hopefully, you're not doing any child porn there, Vinny. Um, <laughs> cousin porn's allowed as long as the cousin's not a child. Anyway, <laughs> I have to give Vinny a hard time. He's from Arkansas. Uh, all right. So, <laughs> so Twitter is expanding a test that allows users to hide replies to tweets globally. The new feature is designed to help mitigate the impact of bullying. Hidden tweets won't be deleted, but will be hidden behind an extra layer. The platform has shown willingness to multiple several core features. Uh, so I haven't even tried it yet. I don't even know if it works. Uh, uh, but apparently it's it's activated now. And if somebody replied to one of my tweets with some kind of nonsense, then then I I should be able to go there and hide them. Uh, maybe I'll have to try it out. I don't I've, I've never I don't see too many um, replies to my tweets that are saying things that really annoy me. On certain topics I have in the past, and I've been flooded. Um, <laughs> bullshit has been globally ignored. Yes. <laughs> All right. So Twitter will expand the feature that lets users hide the replies. Uh, specifically, the new feature lets you hide certain replies on their tweets uh, that they may find objectionable, objectionable or unfit for public consumption, and is designed to give you more control over your conversations on the state site. Uh, when a hidden reply, uh, when when a reply is hidden, it won't actually be removed from the thread, just placed under, so nobody else will be able to see it. I think you'll still be able to see it. So um, the feature, which has previously tested in the U.S., Canada, and Japan, is part of Twitter's effort to clean up abusive content and make social media platform more user-friendly. So when I reply to somebody that whatever they're saying is just absolute nonsense, maybe I've been hidden. I, I don't know. <laughs> During testing, the company found that people mostly hid replies. They found irrelevant, off-topic, or annoying. <laughs> so... <laughs> Annoying would be probably the one that I'd use the most. Um, Z also said the blog post that, that said in the blog post that some people did not want to hide replies due to fear of retaliation, and said Twitter would t continue to get feedback on the issue. Twitter will also check with users who's, who use the feature uh, whether they want to block the replier. So you could just block the person out. Of course, you don't really need them to do. I mean, it, that's already a thing uh, there going on. So, I mean, you can block any Twitter user you want uh, for for no reason whatsoever, just because you want to. So uh, anyway, I, I found it kind of interesting. Uh, uh, let me go. Let me go over. Let me go. Let me go over to Twitter here. Let me let me just test this out. I I have. I, I have uh, let's see here. Uh, Vinny Vinny commented on something. Let me see here. Can, is there is there a way to block his ass? Let's see here. Twitter. Uh, uh, na, 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 mute mute this conversation. Add to new moment. Uh, I don't I don't see the thing that says hide his reply. Um, yeah, no, it gives me copy link to tweet, embed tweet, mute, Vinny, mute this conversation. Uh, maybe mute this conversation. I, I don't know. Block Vinny Radio. Report tweet, add to new moment. I'm not even sure what the hell that is. So I, I don't see the thing that that lets me uh, hide his his reply. But apparently there is one. Did I post that link over here? Uh, I did not. Okay. So here you go. Um, <laughs> no, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna block you, Vinny. 
Settle down. Settle down. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> this article, I, I, I post this article here just because I, I found it humorous. Uh, and it is humorous to me. Whether it's humorous to the people that wrote it, uh, humorous to the United States State Department, humorous to Turkey or Russia, probably not, but it was humorous to me. <laughs> this is posted on SputnikNews.com on uh, the 22nd of November. Turkey says it will activate S-400, that's a Russian missile defense system, as the United States State Department advises them to destroy it. So basically, Turkey said, shove it up your ass, we'll do what we want. <laughs> the State Department said that Turkey must get rid of the S-400 systems that it obtained from Russia this year to, quote, move forward, unquote, in its relations with the U.S. So leave yourself vulnerable so that the United States will like you better. To the, the U.S., which has threatened to oppose, impose additional sanctions on the country otherwise. We're going to screw you over if you don't do everything we say exactly how we say it. Turkish Minister of Defense, Halusi Akar, stated on the 21st of November that his country is going to activate and make use of the air defense systems that it bought under contract with Russia, Inc. in 2017. The S-400 will be functioning. At the moment, Turkish military personnel are undergoing training on the use of the S-400s. After this, it uh, is concluded the planned use of the S-400s will start. Do not doubt it, he said. At the same time, Akar said that Turkey is currently working on making the use of both the S-400 uh, and the U.S.-made F-35 uh, jets possible. So they're going to use U.S. jets and the, the Russian uh, S-400s. The minister stressed that the country is not going to sacrifice one weapon in order to make use of another, referring to the U.S. unwillingness to ship its fifth-generation jets to Ankara unless it ditches the S-400s. Can the F-35 and the S-400 work together? Uh, what are the negative effects on each other? Can they be prevented? How can we use it without any effect, uh, without any harm? What, have, what we have started working on it. If they even, if they, even if they won't be able to work together, we will find a formula to resolve the issue, he said. This year, Washington suspended shipment of the F-35s ordered and paid for by Turkey. So they're just screwing them out of their money and their jets, claiming that the S-400s the country obtained earlier could harm the jet by revealing its weakness to Moscow. Huh. So there's a weakness that the S-400 exploits and you don't want anybody to know. <laughs> so the uh, Ankara has repeatedly dismissed these concerns, arguing that Russia won't have access to the air defense systems deployed in Turkey. In addition, the United States has threatened to impose sanctions against Turkey if it doesn't get rid of the S-400 defense system, something Ankara has repeatedly said, no to. Following negotiations between Trump and Erdogan, Erdogan in November, the two countries established a group, including members of their national security teams, to address the bilateral issue that has recently been spoiling relations between Turkey and the U.S. Despite this, the U.S. State Department recently said that Turkey must either destroy or return the S-400s if it wants to, quote, move forward, unquote, in its relations with Washington. That is strong-arm bully tactics. That's all that is. That is the United States throwing its weight around, 
saying, we are going to do bad stuff to you if you don't bow down and lick our freaking boots. Ah. Ah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. I, I love the wording that they, some of these people use. <laughs> now, when I when I first saw this article, which was published on the 23rd of November here, on the Daily Mail at co.uk, I, I just busted out laughing. I mean, literally busted out laughing. I wasn't rolling on the floor laughing, but I was definitely laughing out loud here in this very room where I'm sitting. And it could be heard, I am sure, by if, if anybody were close enough uh, to the outside of this room to hear things, noises from this room, they would have heard me busting a gut laughing over this article. Not that it's funny. It's just funny that it took so long for these people to get to it. <laughs> New sexed up dossier Fuhrer. Explosive leaked email claims that the UN watchdogs report into alleged poison gas attack by Assad was doctored. So was it the justified British and American missile strikes on Syria? Duh! <laughs> A leaked email last night dramatically indicated that UN's poison gas watchdog had butchered and censored a critical report on an alleged chemical attack in Syria. If substantiated, the revelations will be severely embarrassing for Britain, France, and the good old US of A, which launched a massive military strike in retaliation Retaliation means you're do, re, going back for something they did to you. And saying they did something to you was never even part of the conversation. But a massive military strike in re retaliation without waiting for proof that chemical weapons had actually been used. And not only used, but used by the people you said it was used by, rather than other folks that you know who actually did it, which were not the people you said did it. Unconfirmed reports and videos showing the corpses of adults and children, which were actually not photos of that particular gas attack, if that particular gas attack even happened, but photos of other gas attacks, probably done by Israel over in Palestine. That's a, you know, we, we don't want to cover that little technical thing. Anyway, showing corpses of uh, adults and children foaming at the mouth in Duma, a suburb of Damascus, shocked the world. Not really. In, in April 2018, I think most people knew it was false flag and led to a joint Western attack on a supposed culprit. It didn't lead to a joint Western attack. That, that joint Western attack had been pre-planned long before these phony false flag gas attacks happened. So they said Syria, in which more than 100 missiles, including 70 Tomahawk cruise missiles, were fired. Although the reports and films could not be independently verified, as the alleged events took place in a war zone, then under control of brutal Islamist militants, that which were, oh yeah, the U.S. put them in there and funded them and trained them and gave them weapons. Oh, those brutal Islamist militants? Yes, those. <laughs> so, the brutal Islamist militants, Western governments, and many Western media took them at face value. The Trumpster tweeted at the time, many dead, including women and children, in mindless chemical attack in Syria. Area of atrocity is in lockdown and encircled by Syrian army, making it completely inaccessible to the outside world. President Putin, Russia, and Iran are responsible for backing the animal Assad. Big price to pay. Open area immediately for medical help and verification. Another humanitarian disaster for no reason whatsoever. Sick. What is sick, Trump head? Are your lies. 
Not just your lies, because you're just reading off a script, I know. You you were merely reading off a script, saying that this is what happened over there. Because you've been told that, and there's a good chance that you actually believed what you'd been told about Assad uh, doing this with absolutely no information, no 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 proof whatsoever. How do you feel now? How do you like me now there, Mr. Trumpster? <laughs> All right. So let's say that today you die. And six months from now, your body, maybe it's sitting in a uh, a box somewhere, not buried yet, just sitting in a box somewhere. And somebody goes and, and, and checks you out. And they, you say, wait a minute. I laid this guy straight, you know, his arms and legs straight to his sides, or his, 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 his legs straight down, his arms to his sides, and now look at him. He looks like he's been doing, dancing the Watusi there in his box. I, I am not going to give you a laugh about Creepy Joe's latest. Uh, that just came out today, as far as I know, and, um, yeah, no. <laughs> Creepy Joe, man. <laughs> bouncing. Oh, I love kids bouncing on my lap. Okay. <laughs> what, what can you even say? Well, how could, how could you make something <laughs> funnier, creepier than that guy? <laughs> All right. Okay. So, 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 so you die. And six months later, your friend looks at your corpse and it's like, what's going on here? Well, apparently, according to this study, horrifying study, corpses thrash around for a year after death. Scientists photographed the, photographed the corpse for 17 months so you don't have to. Yes, indeed, people spinning in their graves is actually quite common, according to the gruesome new scientific research. As bodies decompose, they tend to slowly, but surely, writhe around for a year or longer. According to agency France Presse, uh, this disturbing factoid comes courtesy of scientists at the Australian facility, facility for Taphonomic Experimental Research, a body farm, where human corpses are made available for scientific research. And it could have far-reaching implications for forensic investigators. To determine how corpses wriggle around over time, Australian scientists photographed the man's corpse, donated to the body farm for study, every half hour for 17 months. According to research published last month in the new journal called Forensic Science International Synergy, <laughs> troublingly, the body's arms started down along its sides, but ended up outstretched. We think the movements relate to the process of decomposition as the body mummifies and the ligaments dry out. <laughs> so there you are, dead and dancing. Woohoo! <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad you did there, Suxer. <laughs> All right. Now this next article, I'd love to cover it, cover it in, in detail and at length, but I just don't have the time, and I'm assuming. Most of you already realize this, but the fact that it was posted up uh, here on the website in the recent days, uh, November 22nd, by the way, on the uh, website stateofthenation2012.com. And I do have a question, but maybe somebody can answer that for me at a later time. Gladio false flag mass shootings. FBI stages MCEs like clockwork. Now, I looked, I searched for what MCEs could stand for, uh, the exact acronym definition there, but I couldn't find it. So it's MCE apostrophe S. MCEs. I, I don't know what that means. It's not listed in the article anywhere, and I couldn't find an uh, uh, acronym definition for that. All right. The FBI appears to be involved in staging or covering up active shooter and terror hoax every six weeks, like clockwork. 
it is a known fact that the FBI is the biggest source of domestic terrorism in America. Since there's no legitimate domestic terrorists for these clowns to catch, they are just creating them instead. The reason they are engaging in such ridiculous behavior is because they have to justify their pointless and ridiculous jobs. It also serves as a great way to justify different political agendas and boost cable television ratings. For years, years they have been entrapping useful idiots and masterminding various uh, terror plots. They've also uh, covered up properly and officially... Uh, what? They've also... What happened there? Oh, they've also been involved in the investigation of various staged hoaxes, so the hoax itself can be covered up properly, and the official narrative propagated to the masses. Perhaps even more insane is that many of these staged events appear to now be occurring roughly every six weeks. Is it true that these events don't always happen six weeks apart? Yes, it is. But usually the FBI doesn't go much longer than two months before they are involved in another highly questionable event. After all, they are undoubtedly, are undoubtedly, a number of logistical challenges that go along with staging these elaborate hoaxes. So perhaps they can't always stick to the planned schedule. The guys over at the No Agenda podcast have been observing this phenomenon for quite some time now, and it looks like they could be on to something. I'm out of time. Like I said, I wish I could cover this in depth and in detail, but um, it's not that long of an article. But there are a lot of links uh, to relevant information about this. So I think you should go through and read it and understand, share it with people that laugh when you say something with a false flag. Share it with Chloe. Chloe, are you there? <laughs> I'm going to post it over in the secret channel so Chloe can see that article. Because, yes, false flags are real and regularly done and done by your government. The it could never happen here nonsense is nonsense. So <laughs> there's that. Anyway, thanks, everybody, for tuning in here. Did I, did I mention, have I, ha, have I mentioned that this was episode 50 of the Grim Leftovers show? Uh, and today being the second, that means in two weeks on the 16th of November, actually next week will, will be the one year anniversary, uh, but in two weeks will be show number 52, which which means a year's worth of shows. I took one week off at some point during the year. I, I don't recall why, but I think it was a, a technical issue that I that I could not get get past. But so. On on the on the on the sixteenth will be the the fifty second show or one year's worth of shows. At that point, I may take off on the twenty third and the thirtieth. I, I haven't decided yet, but I'm thinking about that. Take a couple of weeks off there and start fresh in the new year. Um, so just bear that in mind. Uh, but but I, I will do next week and the week after for sure. So anyway, thanks everybody for tuning in. I, I've had a great time sharing my laughs and stories with y'all. Uh, hopefully I'll see you next week here and in the chat room and on Freakers Ball. Uh, check the schedule on reallywemedia.com for all of the shows on RLM Radio. Talk to y'all later. Have a great week. Peace!